Colorado State and Wyoming. All right, thank you, Steve. We're here in Laramie, Wyoming, where Colorado State and Wyoming are taking part in the 91st edition of the Border War. Colorado State in the white, Wyoming in the brown. I'm Mark Jones along with Mike Golick and Rob Stone down on the sidelines. Just a few moments ago, Colorado State drove the ball downfield and missed a 22-yard field goal attempt. Wyoming now with the ball on Colorado State's 35. And this is Cliff Bry running well and authoritatively here in the early going. Takes it down to the 27-yard line. That's the type of running play that'll work for Wyoming in this run and shoot offense because it's a pass game. The draw works much better than the conventional running uh, plays that they want to use. Again, this isn't a hurry up offense. They're going with the no huddle offense to keep Colorado State's defense set. Second down and three. Coach Dana Dimmel said he had a few tricks up his sleeve for Colorado State. Stoner complete at the 12 yard line. Montgomery again pushed out of bounds by John Howell. A 14 yard pickup. You'll see this play a lot tonight. Stoner rolling to his left, not always looking to the receiver to his left. He's doing that to try and draw the safety. Then they'll have the crossing routes from the wide receivers on the right. Look at Stoner's numbers on the season. Keep in mind that he has missed the last two games because of that separated sternum. He also has a shoulder injury. Montgomery now is caught. 37 has gone 37 consecutive games catching a pass they give it to Brian he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage at the 12 yard line but down by Smith number 55 there's a look at Montgomery a very impressive streak indeed a school record and he is the go to guy here 6 2 210 pounder big receiver tall receiver got a lot of tall receivers in the fold with Shuck and Nash Six two and six feet. Also, a lot of old receivers, all seniors. This year. Second down and ten. This is the ninth play of the Wyoming drive. Stoner had it batted down at the line of scrimmage by number ninety, Greg Pollard. Colorado State on defense now. A few moments ago, on offense, their first possession of the game, they moved it downfield very well behind their workhorse, McDougal, and then they missed a 22-yard field goal. That was C.W. Hurst, who came into the game seven of eight in field goal attempts. The 11th play now with the Wyoming drive. Stoner with time, and now brought down from behind to the 20. Hagens, Clark Hagens, number 96. The school leader in sacks. And that is his seventh of the season right there. This guy's going to be fun to watch all night. The snap. A little low and to the right. Had it well, again, rolling a bit to the left. Got a lot of time trying to get out of there, but Hagens runs him down. Hagens not very big, very speedy defensive end with great hand play. You'll be hearing his name a lot tonight. I'm sure Will Ellen now in to attempt a field goal. This one coming from 36 yards out. Well, I guess they're even now. Both teams missing. <laughs> relatively makeable field goal attempts and as a result a couple of zeros still up on the scoreboard we'll be back right after this first down and 10 from the 20 under an imposing full moon in laramie wyoming pass incomplete by newton it'll be second down and 10 intended for number 27 dallas davis Obviously, Colorado State trying to mix it up early. You saw a handful of passes on their first drive. Play actions after trying to run McNu McDougal up the middle. Newton got a very good percentage. He's really a great pocket passer. They'll half roll him a little bit on the play action to go over the tackles to buy him a little time. But his best place to be is right between those tackles. Both teams, uh, their respective quarterbacking controversies. The people in Colorado State calling for Cutlip, the backup to play. Second down, play fake. Pass is complete. Wilson Hoom pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Adrian Hill making the tackle on the play. Again, you get an open receiver twofold. The play action holds the linebackers and the defensive backs in Wyoming. It's not really a man team, so they're going to play off anyway. So if they at all go for the run fake, they're going to be out of position. 
Pouncey wide open. Nobody within in coverage was the linebacker coming over late because he got sucked in on the fake run. Sets up a first down and 10. McDougal out to the 36 yard line running well here in the early going rich making the stop on the play and I guess the jury's might out a little bit still Mike but he looks pretty healthy to me he, he is something else 18 rolls of tape per day <laughs> they use on him for his ankles his knee his groin his abductor and his shoulder when they have a, a padded practice 18 rolls of tape a day but this guy's he is bread and butter between the tackles that is their, their play second down and five here he is again McDougal leaping over a would-be tackler out to the 42 yard line close to a first down and they're going to give it to him a first down and 10 now Jarnigan making the tackle for Wyoming see we talked about Wyoming and, and how they over pursue this is a smart play like a belly play a wide handoff to start to make that defense really run toward the play and it'll open up the cutback lanes you'll see McDougal probably cut back a lot more than he's going to run to the outside McDougal leads the Mountain West Conference in rushing coming into the game. He's 417 to reach the 1,000 yard plateau. 23 yards so far tonight. Orlando Newton looking downfield. And incomplete. Good coverage back there. And now a flag thrown at the 17 yard line. It was intended for Frank Rice. Matt Lenning in on the coverage at free safety. Boy, that one came in very late. And you got to wonder if they may call it uncatchable. You look at Colorado State head coach in his seventh season. Yeah. That's why it surprised me the flag coming out. The ball is yeah. well over the receiver's head. Nice to see the officiating crew working together on that one and getting the proper call. Again, they're dragging over the middle two receivers. You see this one way over the head. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even agree with the flag, even if it was catchable. But a good call by the referee saying it was not. Sets up a second down and ten from the 42-yard line for the Rams. Dougal the lone back. Give us to the fullback up the middle. Good ball handling that time. By the quarterback Matt Newton, McDougal took it down to the 45-yard line. That looked like an old play out of the Washington Redskins <laughs> playbook with the with Corey Wolstenholme leading the way. The tight end went in motion. He was actually like a pulling guard leading McDougal through the hole. I don't remember seeing that one watching film, Mike. <laughs> That's one of those wrinkles Coach Dimmel was might have, might have been referring to, looking out for from Coach Lubin. First down and 10. It's going to be Lubick with a few tricks up his own sleeve and his offensive coordinator, Steve Fairchild. Flag down on the field. You know, Colorado State has to have that running mindset coming into this game. That's, that's Absolutely. really their bread and butter. That certainly is. <laughs> Let's see what the call is. Now, watch the quarterback said. He jumps off sides. And then they throw. I don't. They're just calling it a play. And it's second and ten. There was no penalty call. They fell on the ball like a fumble recovery at second and ten. Strange things in the border war. Newton. Incomplete at the 40-yard line. Intended for Davis. Let's go back to the studio and another Davis. Reese. Well, Mark, Oklahoma is absolutely punishing Texas A&M. The Aggies just looking for the bus back to College Station at this point. Josh Heifel, Trent Smith, second touchdown pass. Heifel runs for three more. 41-6. The Aggies are going down. All right, we still can't get over the fact that Oklahoma, the team that <laughs> passing really, the ball? Yeah, <laughs> passing it that much. It's very weird to see. The team that made its name on the wishbone. Not only passing, but getting, getting in the passing and passing it well. Third down and 10 for Colorado State. McDougal alone back. Newton escapes and fires complete to Wolstenholm. He is wrestled out of bounds at the 40 yard line by Allen Jones. Well, again, 
third and ten, they're going with the play action. I don't think that I don't think on third and ten play action is really fooling anybody. Newton trying to roll to get some time. We've seen Wilston Hume open a few times out there, but not getting a ton of yards after. There was a decision there. Fourth and two, do you go for that on your the 38 yard line? They're gonna punt it and try and pin him in. Coach Little thinking it's a bit early to go for it on fourth down. 426 to go in the first period. Ian Horniak, he has had just one touchback all season long, which is an impressive statistic. Jennings back deep. And not one of his better efforts. No. It won't be a touchback, though. No. <laughs> he did have 11 <laughs> punts inside the 20. This one didn't make it that far. We'll be right back after this. Well, after that 14-yard punt, Wyoming taking over on its own 22-yard line, first down and 10. Mark Jones along with Mike Golick and Rob Stone down on the sideline. Zeroes on the board in the border war. Jay Stoner in a quarterback for Wyoming. the reverse on the end around and falls back at the 16. That one blew up before it even had an opportunity to develop. Well, that's the one thing these receivers do get a decent amount of runs in this offense. King the least of it. That's just his fourth carry of the year. Had a hole there. Don't know how quickly it would have closed up and never had the chance when he lost his feet. Sets up a second down and 16. He may have mishandled the ball and Wyoming self-destructing so far in the first two plays. Stoner jumped back on the ball. It'll be third down and 17. Both teams a little inconsistent getting some drives and then messing up as they do here. That ball never even got back. Shotgun. Center never even got it back to the quarterback. Never even left him. We talked about it during the commercial break. You wonder if both teams a little bit uptight for such a big game. Five defensive backs in for Colorado State on third and 17. The screen set up well. Jennings. John Jennings out to the 31 yard line. He's about two yards short of the first down. John Howell made the stop, a pickup of 15 yards. Good call by Wyoming. They're going to come flying after your quarterback. This is a good way to slow him up, but great pursuit by Colorado State. Watch the left of your screen. You're going to see all the D linemen, Clark Hagens and company getting down there to help out on the tackle keeping three yards short of the first down wearing now into punt the second leading punter in the Mountain West Conference Dallas Davis that's him standing back on his own 25 Davis shoes the fair catch and is brought down to the 37 yard line a 42-yard punt, 10 on the return, Sweeney making the stop. We'll be right back. Zeros on the board for this game, steeped in history. Right, Rob Stone? Yeah, it's tough to get some face time with that quick Wyoming <laughs> offense going on, right? Behind me, the centerpiece of this game, the bronze boot awarded every year since 1968 to the winner. It's an actual boot worn in Vietnam by a Colorado Strait ROTC member. As you can tell by the security forces behind me, they obviously take it pretty seriously. So does Wyoming head coach Dana Dimmel. He's had the trophy in his office the entire year, and yesterday, guys, he sounded like a kid who lost his dog when the staff members had to take it out of his office. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Thanks, Rob. It's a very big symbol of pride in these parts, and they'll take it out and make presentations with that trophy throughout the course of the athletic calendar. The pass by Newton complete to Okoa the tight end a look at the border war and Wyoming leading 18 13 since the era of the bronze boot first meeting way back 19 18 99 100 years ago <laughs> look at the road teams have been very successful the last four meetings an interesting phenomena that neither coach could really no. explain nope. Rashawn Sanders now, the new tailback for Colorado State, number 41, an impressive freshman. Six foot two ten out of San Diego, California. And this is Sanders. In for McDougal. Sanders pounding his way between the tackles down to the 50, actually the 49-yard line. He's on Wyoming's side of midfield. Rich and Jarnigan making the tackle. Well, you look for silver linings in a black cloud, the black cloud being McDougal when he was hurt, but now Sanders 
gets those carries. Instead of sitting on the sideline when Kevin McDougal gets all the carries, Rashawn Sanders is getting that experience. So when McDougal is gone next year, Sanders can step right in and take over. Yeah, and McDougal has been a big help for Sanders, the freshman. Coach Lubick says he's tough, he doesn't fumble, and he's ahead of the learning curve so far. First down and 10, time winding down in the first period. There's the counter, Sanders again. Brought down at the 45-yard line, the freshman is. Had a career high 106 yards rushing and a touchdown and 11 carries against New Mexico State a few weeks ago. And Colorado State doing a nice job of mixing up their plays from the play actions to the counters to the regular belly runs, really trying to keep Wyoming's defense on their heels a bit, and it's working at this point. Under a minute to play in the first period, still 0-0. Both teams have missed relatively easy field goal attempts. the play fake. Iris completed the 42 to his tight end again, Wolston Hume. He's been a big part of their offense so far. Well, that's the third time he's been he's had to catch out in the flat there and having some room to run. Obviously, Wyoming is going to have to key on him a little more. Wolston Hume also blocking very well. And then when he goes, he's going in motion and becoming a blocker. Then he'll go in motion. They'll play action. And when he, when he was becoming a blocker, he'll go out in the flat for the pass. So, again, the mix-up of play calling in Colorado State really benefiting themselves right now. Yeah, sets up a first and 10 after that 12-yard gain. Colorado State looking very balanced here in the first quarter. Newton hands it off to Sanders. Almost broke that one, brought down by Jared Jarnigan. Great job by the interior offensive line for Colorado State. Center and guard just straight down the field, moving people down the field. Sanders doesn't get touched till he's four yards into Wyoming's defense. That's a great job by this offensive line. It's a big offensive line, just about all of them over 300 pounds. And they love to just move forward. Not a lot of zone blocking with them. They'll, they'll man block it straight ahead and try and knock into the cheap seats. <laughs> and Steve Fairchild, the offensive coordinator, says that when it's all said and done, that this could be the best offensive unit here they've ever had. And the first 50 minutes is in the books for quarterback Matt Newton of Colorado State and the rest of his Rams. Zeros on the board. That's the end of the first. And Welcome back to a scoreless and shirtless Laramie, Wyoming. Colorado State, Wyoming, scoreless at zero. All kinds of ceremonies surrounding the border war. One of them involving a well-traveled piece of leather. Yesterday at 7 a.m., Fort Collins, ROTC cadets from Colorado State ran it 42 miles north. The opening game ball to the Colorado-Wyoming border where they turned it over on U.S. Highway 287 to Wyoming's cadets who carried it here to the War Memorial Stadium in Laramie. And just minutes before kickoff, head coach Dana Demo presenting it to the refs. That is one well-treated piece of leather. <laughs> yeah, and one well-trained group of delivery people because I want to run the part that's going downhill as opposed to uphill. And this is Rashawn Sanders trying to run downhill. And he's brought down at the 28-yard line on second and 12 by Matt Potts, number 42. We look at the first quarter stats of Colorado State with better time possession, running the ball better. Holding that Wyoming, again, they're not a running team, but should have more passing yards than this in this run and shoot. That's the, the big part of this offense. You need to get more yards through the air. You need bigger average per game per pass. Looking at third down and three. Austin Hume in motion to the top of your screen. Newton comes back the other way, fires a dark complete. Ribsock making the catch and has a first down. What a bullet thrown by Matt Newton. And that is his strength again in the pocket with his arm. Reefstock did a great job. He took about one step back for the ball. He came back to it, and that's what gave him the reception. Wasn't bad coverage on defense by Trent Gamble, but what Reefstock did is he, he came back a step or two, made sure he got the reception and the first down. First down and 10, and if there were any questions about Matt Newton's arm, there certainly are none now. Goes to the ball on the 17-yard line. play fake and almost intercepted at the 12 yard line good defense that time number 20 Trent Gamble in on the play to break it up now they Wyoming has a field corner to boundary corner so Trent Gamble will always be the corner to the wide side of the field this time 
Newton trying to do a little too much. Gamble was there the whole time he tried to drill that one in there, and he's lucky Gamble didn't come up with the interception. Good coverage there. He will be to the field side all night as the cornerback. Looking at second down and 10 now. Sanders the lone back. Rice split to the bottom of the screen. Sanders brought down right near the line of scrimmage. Good penetration that time by Chukwura and Van Emmerich, number 93. Good play by Van Emmerich. What Colorado State tried to do, they lined up their tight ends and receivers to the right and then tried to run it away from all the blockers, figuring they'd find a hole. But Van Emmerich did a nice job of getting penetration, getting them behind the line, because if he didn't get it, there might have been a big gain there. Colorado State running to the weak side. They've been running more to the strong side. Look at Colorado State inside the 20. Pretty good numbers, 15 of 17. This is the 10th play of their drive. Yeah, what's impressive about that, 12 of the 15 are touchdowns. They converted just moments ago on third down, and this is Sanders. And he will be stopped short of the first at the 13. Sets up a fourth down and six. Casavan and Jarnigan making the tackle for Wyoming. Well, that surprises me a little bit that they didn't go for the first down. I wonder if that had anything to do with Newton trying to drill that pass on the sideline that Gamble almost intercepted. A little bit of force. And, and Coach Lewis might have thought, you know what? We'll keep it safe. We'll get that field goal instead of having my quarterback try and drill another one in. First is 0 of 1 today. Out of the hold of Rebstock. And 31 yards out. He nails this one. So C.W. Hurst atones for the earlier miss, giving Colorado State the first point to the ball game. We'll be right back. C.W. Hurst with a 31-yard field goal to cap an 11-play, 50-yard drive using up 446 on the clock as the Rams score first in the border war. Hurst kicking off to Darren Uncourt and Alex English. English number 87 on the left ran one back last week. Getting nowhere near this one. No way. This one out of the back of the end zone. Let's go back to Reese Davis in the studio. Hey, Mark, here's some more of that Oklahoma aerial attack for you. Josh Heifel working against Texas A&M, this time going to Brandon Daniels. Third touchdown pass of the night, but just to make you feel good, Heifel has three more in the J.C. Watts fashion. He's run them in. And Florida State and Clemson, 14-6. Clemson on top. Travis Miner crashes it in there. Knowles go for two and make it. And after three quarters, Bobby and Tommy and Miss Ann Fellas all tied at 14. It's a family affair. <laughs> <laughs> family feud, too. Jennings in a tailback. Stoner fires incomplete and a flag thrown as Wendell Montgomery's progress was impeded with. A mere, mere low. Mere low, yeah. Oh, boy, I don't know. But he looked like he timed this thing beautifully. He blocked it with his left hand. So when we get a look at it, watch his right hand and the right side of his body. If that's what, if, if it was interference, that's the part that was going to hit. Uh, that was close. He looked like he timed it very well. All right, let's check it out. The left hand will block it. Oh, boy, I tell you what, it looked like he got there right with the ball. But Might that's that what the right rest sees. It's the right hand. It's the off hand, not the block hand. It's the off hand. If they see it around the body, that's when the ref throws a flag. That looked like good coverage. Then. First down and 10. They hand it off to Jennings, who has some room. Jennings out to the 38-yard line near another Wyoming first down. John Jennings, the unheralded senior, team's leading rusher coming into the game, stopped by Adam Wade that time, averaging 4.2 yards per rush to go along with four rushing touchdowns on the season. Unspectacular, but efficient and steady. Senior, one of the senior leaders of this team. Sets up a first down. They try to screen, and Jennings got drilled. Number nine, Adam Wade, says hello. Well, that's your strong side linebacker. Not a lot of size, but a lot of athleticism. Sniffs this one out and gets behind the blockers. 
the wide receiver was actually trying to block him. He beat that block easily, so no offensive lineman on the screen that gets out front never got a hand on him. Yeah, Wade filling in for Tony Calcione with a high ankle sprain, seizing that job. Here's Stoner, complete underneath to number 19, Tommy Nash. And Nash is brought down immediately at the 39. Right now, what Colorado State's doing, knowing it's the run and shoot for Wyoming, is they're backing off their zone. Even their backers are dropping deep. They're conceding all these underneath routes. They're going to go ahead and let Stoner look around. Want Hagens to get in there on the rush on the D line. They're going to drop deep and just try and give him the underneath stuff and react to it. It's a third down and seven for Wyoming. They give it to Cliff Pry that time. Little inside handoff out to the 47 yard line. Boy, you really have to watch closely, Mike, with the way they handle the ball. Yeah, running backs look like blockers. They become ball carriers very quickly for both these teams. Vickers making the tackle that time for the Rams. Fourth down and short. They're about a yard short of the first. Maybe uh, early decision time for head coach Dana Dimmel when we come back. Dana Dimmel going for it on fourth down and short. They are two of five in fourth down conversion situations this season. Good part of the field to gamble. And here's the first roll of the dice in this ballgame. Stoner trying to draw them offside, keeps it. And it looks as if he got the first down. They're going to give him a very favorable spot up near the 50-yard line. So Jay Stoner gets the job done. He called that at the line of scrimmage. Got to the line, saw where the overload was on the defensive line for Colorado State, and felt calling his own number was the best move. Hey, why not? Sure. First down and 10 from the 50. Play fake. Stoner has some mobility, sneaks his way down to the 45-yard line. Slides in very softly and gingerly. Good coverage out in the flat by Colorado State. That's exactly where Stoner was going the whole way. Didn't see it. Smart move by him to just eat it and run right away and get what you can. You'll see a lot of rollouts, both right and left, to try and set up more passes over the middle by dragging wide receivers. Yeah, and Dimmel says that Stoner's looking at things more like a coach now. Seeing a lot of things young men his age don't see when evaluating film, and the two weeks off gave him an opportunity to step back a little bit. So under seven of ten passing, this time they hand it off to the superback, number 23, Cliff Bry. Bry stopped up at the line of scrimmage. Number 96, Clark Hagens, along with McKenzie. Well, oh, this is not the forte of Wyoming <laughs> running the ball right up the middle again when your offensive line is in a two-point stance. Again, their hands not on the ground because they mostly pass. But Coach Dana Dimble did say they would get down in the three-point a little bit tonight. Still, if it is a running game, it's out of the two-point stand. An offensive line that cannot get the same type of leverage in that stance. Third down and four. They've got to get to the 40. There's the end around to Bry, and he's short of the first down. Tuatella making the stop that time, the 6'2", 230-pound senior. He, along with Amir Lowe, the field corner, did a nice job of not going for the pass the fake at all. And obviously it was zone coverage, wasn't locked onto a receiver, came in and filled great. Teams have been shutting that play down of late. They have, and, and Coach Dimmel has said he wasn't going to run it as much as much trickery, but you know what, you got to pull it out of the play. Trying to convert again on fourth and one. Here they go. King in motion. Stoner to pass. Picked off by Tuatella. And Colorado has the first turnover of the ball game. Bry making the tackle after the interception. That is a great job of Tuatella studying film. Look, it's gonna, he's going to roll a little bit right again. He, then he wants to look to the middle of the field. That's what they like to do. Tuatella read his eyes the whole way and drifted and stayed in the middle of the field. Read the quarterback's eyes. Never looked where the receiver was going. Just read Stoner's eyes. As you see off to the left, wide open. Montgomery downfield. 
But again, it was a half roll right where they'll look back to the middle of the field, but usually not all the way back to the other side of the field. And now for Colorado State, Mike McDougal back in a tailback. Takes the toss. Brought down at the 35-yard line by Leo Cares. Well, Colorado State has really made the most of turnovers in years past. This year, they're still looking to get to that plus category. Look at 1997, plus 26. Gotta love that number. But this season, they've suffered eight turnovers in the last two games alone, running, resulting in 34 points for the other side. Second down and 10. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. In a low-scoring game. Newton to pass downfield. His receiver coming back nicely to the ball that time. Dallas Davis made the catch. Wyoming fans raining booze down on the field. Yeah, look up at the, the top of the screen. The rusher coming in. Number 93, Van Emmerich. He just gets held incredibly <laughs> by two guys. Colorado State dodged the bullet right there. Referee's behind the quarterback. He's got to be able to see that one. Yeah, show had got away with one that time. As the O-line says, hey, the ref didn't throw the flag. That means I wasn't holding. <laughs> Third down and five. On the season, they are last in the Mountain West Conference. Newton up top. Into coverage and almost caught. But incomplete intended for Davis again. Al Rich. The strong safety, there he is, came over and broke it up. Oh, that was a bad throw by Newton. If you're going to throw deep, throw to the single-covered man. Al Rich came over to the wide man. He had Wilson, whom the, the tight end running right down the middle of the field in single coverage. If you're going to take a shot, I'd rather take a shot in single coverage more than double coverage. Newton so far, Mike, not afraid to try and no force it in there and thread it a little bit. Fourth down and five. The Rams will punt. Cliff Bry standing in his own 15-yard line. Going for the fair catch. And Wyoming will take off on its own 17 when we come back. Welcome back to Laramie, Wyoming. Mark Jones along with Mike Golick and Rob Stone. Colorado State leading three to nothing. 91st edition of the Border War. Inside handoff to Bly. Finds some open space and crosses the 30-yard line. Brought down by John Howell. Nice run that time by Bry. He's an impressive-looking impressive Richard fre freshman. Yeah, he hits the holes quick. That time, Chris Chihos, the right guard, got out in front of him, gave a great block downfield and sprung him. But you got to get in that hole quick because you're right, Bride gets to the hole very, very quickly, so the linemen really have to beat him. Yeah, he's rushed nine times for 48 yards. Here's pass complete over the middle that time to Brock Ralph, number 80, brought down by Howell again. And another Wyoming first down out at midfield. See, that play was almost the same one that Stoner threw the interception. That time the route was a little deeper. Tuatella didn't get as deep as he was and went over the top of him a little easier that time. Stoner got a little more on that ball. And now Beasley in at the super back position. Another four receiver set. Jay Stoner making his first start in three weeks tonight. Hands it off to Beasley and just tripped up by his shoelaces at the 43-yard line that time by number 52, Casey Wolf. The way Wyoming makes up for the fact that they're not in their stances is they have wide splits to widen out the defensive line of the linebackers. That's why the backs have to hit the hole so fast because they close quickly. But that's a way to combat the fact that they're not down in a three-point stance. As you'll see, the splits between the guards and the tackles a lot of times are more, uh, more are larger than normal, two, three feet sometimes. More difficult for the linemen? Offensive linemen? Yes, no, maybe? Well, no, it helps when you spread it out. Still difficult out of the two-point stance to run that. Second and third, Stoner to pass complete. Once again, it's Brock Ralph. And another first down for the Cowboys. Howell in on his third consecutive tackle. 
Again, the defense spread out. The blitz coming right up the middle. Stoner sees it coming. He knows he's got to get rid of the ball quick. Good play, good block. Picking up the blitzer, but Stoner, smart play. Saw it coming, got rid of the ball. Mike Stoner hasn't taken a lot of hits tonight, which is good because he does have that injured shoulder and sternum. Hands it off this time. This is Beasley. And we are seeing a three-pronged attack from the superback position by Wyoming. Beasley running well that time. Eric Olson making the tackle. Another 10-yard pickup and another Wyoming first down. Well, let me tell you what. In a run-and-shoot offense, if you start to get the running game going, let me tell you what, your opponent is in trouble because it is not meant to be a running offense. And they ran more than a few times well on Colorado, Colorado State now, which will really open up the passing game more. This is Wyoming's most impressive drive of the first half. Hunter hands it off to Beasley again. This time, not as much success. Stopped at the 25 and a flag at that spot. Adam Wade in on several tackles tonight, making that stop too. Well, that was almost another late flag as well. Got a face mask on Colorado State. Just when they finally stopped the run one time, they get a face mask. Much to the uh, dismay of Sonny Lubick. Dana Dimmel has put in extra time, extra hours, extra film work this week. Closed practices to the general media. Circle the wagons. Penalty in the defense. First down. You know, and both head coaches said they've had to calm their kids down a little bit during the week. They take they take this to the border, the, the war at the border here very, very seriously. 91st meetings, we look at Jay Stoner's numbers. These kids really get hyped up for this game. And a big recruiting weekend for Wyoming. Brought in four JUCO recruits making their official visits and 12 others. Yeah, 16 total. It's the largest contingent they'll have. Can't bring folks to a party and lose, can you? I tell you. <laughs> it doesn't look good, but if you're going to bring them to a game. This is the kind of, kind of game you want to bring them to. Wyoming winning last year's edition of the Border War 27 to 19 at Fort Collins. The visiting team has won each of the last four meetings in this series. After the face mask, it's first down and five. The Cowboys still looking for their first score. Beasley, the superback. It's Beasley again. And he is brought down at the 18-yard line by Hagens. Good job by Clark Hagens. We talk about what he does as a pass rusher again. Already Colorado State all-time leader in sacks. 255-pounder runs well down the line. You'll definitely see him playing on Sundays. Really plays with his hands well when you watch him. Doesn't let linemen get into him. That does a great job of keeping them off and knocking their hands away on pass runs. Second down and four. Yes, Scott say he may be the best pass rusher in the West. Oh, uh, Adam Goldberg, number 74, the left tackle. He just flinched. Clark Hagens pointed at him. <laughs> Referees threw the flag. That's one of the matchups we referred to yep. at the top of the show. Adam Goldberg, you see him up on the top of your screen. 74, just a little flinch. That's all it takes. You see Hagens, smart play, points at him. Side judge throw the, throws the flag. Red shirt freshman, 6'7", 300-pounder. He's a good one. This kid's got three more years after this year. He's got good feet and hands already. And this is a great test for him tonight. We saw what Colorado State had done in the red zone. Now a look at their counterparts in the red zone. 13 touchdowns to go along with six field goals. 19 to 22. That's pretty good as well. Five receivers in. An empty formation this time. Second and nine. Stoner under pressure. Gets down safely, but roughly, at the 17-yard line. There's a player hurt from Colorado State back at the 33-yard line. To Attella and McKenzie making the tackle on Stoner. I think it's Clark Hagens. He came on a stunt from the end position and ended up coming up the middle. And right as he was getting to Stoner, he got taken out low on the block. Again, it was a stunt. He ends up coming right up the middle at the quarterback. It's right. Lineman falls right on the back of his legs. So he can't get there. And that's what the linemen are going to do. They'll do anything they have to do to keep a defensive lineman off the quarterback. Yeah, Colorado State has already missed so many key players. Lost so many key players this year due to injury. 
You look at their two deep, and it is so much different from the projected one to the start of the season. Well, folks, ESPN Monday Night Countdown begins with Mike Tirico and the gang Mondays at 7 o'clock Eastern time for two hours of analysis, interviews, reviews, and previews. And then on Monday, the Falcons head to Three Rivers to tackle the bus. Jerome Bettis and the Pittsburgh Steelers. ESPN and ABC, your home of primetime NFL football. Don't forget ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. Hagan's coming off, not really putting any pressure on that right leg. And the offensive lineman just threw at the back of his legs to try and protect his quarterback. As Hagan's was coming clean through the middle on a stunt. Behind. That's a bad sign for Colorado yeah. State. Their best defender up front on the line. McGucklin comes in for Hagan's, the backup defensive end. Tonight, just one of five Wyoming on third down conversions. They run the end around unsuccessfully. Cliff Bry brought down for a loss on that play. It'll be fourth down, about eight to go. Amir Lowe lowering the boom. Boy, Amir Lowe and Ula Tuatella are really combining to make some great plays out there. Lowe doing a great job of holding the corner not letting the wide receivers block him, and Tuatella showing great speed for 230-pounder, running him down. Aaron Elling, number eight, coming in for this field goal attempt from 39 yards out. He missed one earlier tonight. Out of the hold of Tom Waring. And this just is not his night so far. 0 for 2 on the evening on a night when points will be very hard to come by. Dana Dimmel's team still looking to get on the scoreboard. And it won't happen on this attempt. Welcome back to Laramie, Wyoming. 3 0 Colorado State with the lead. And Rob Stone telling us from the sidelines that Clark Hagans with an injured right ankle. And right now, out of the ballgame for Colorado State. Rams with the ball on offense. Incomplete at the 32-yard line intended for Dallas Davis. It'll be second down. Newton tonight, 8 of 15 for 81 yards passing. And he had him, Allen Jones, the cornerback there, slipped and fell down. So he was open. Boy, no doubt Newton has a gun. He is just throwing the ball on a rope to these receivers. And he's come a long way since early in the season when fans back at Fort Collins were chanting Cutlip's name. Yeah, they want the backup. They want Steve Cutlip in there. And Coach Lubick said, you know, he's very happy with the way Newton's been playing. They had a team meeting on Saturday, the two of them actually, Newton and Cutlip, and reaffirmed their support of each other. The pass complete that time to the tight end, Wolston Hume, who's been a very big key cog in their offense so far tonight. His fourth reception of the evening. 240 left now in the first half. He has been doing a great job, and I, I credit that actually to the Wyoming cornerbacks. They've been covering the receivers for Colorado State very well. Not really a man team, more a zone team, but when it hits a certain, when the receivers get down the field a certain amount, they are picking them up, and they are sticking with them. Colorado State just one of five on third down tonight. Looking at third and six here. Newton fires complete. Depending on the spot, yes, they will give Dallas Davis the first down. Allen Jones closed quickly, but not quickly enough. A seven-yard pickup and a first down. Well, again, you can run these kind of routes when you have a strong-arm quarterback. It's about a 10-yard out, but he's throwing the ball about 20 yards with the angle. Puts it right in Joey Capori's hands. Did a good job of getting past the sticks. And a look at Hagans on the sideline. Being carted off. Looks like he's in a lot of pain. Under two minutes to play in the first half. Newton escapes and hits Ripstock. Who's brought down short of the 40-yard line that time. By number 40, Hepra. Well, what's helping here is the protection he's getting. It breaks down a bit here, but he buys time by rolling left because his first and second choices are covered. Again, the corners for Wyoming doing a good job. This is, a, this is his, probably his third choice 
going to rep stock, but he did that by buying time. The offensive line giving him time, and that time he helped himself out by rolling left. And the offensive line of Colorado State, as we mentioned, one of the best in the Mountain West Conference, the best actually, allowing just nine sacks on the season so far. Hey, folks, don't forget to catch ESPN Sports Century. That's Friday at 10 p.m. It'll be number 14 now. We're down to 14. The Hammer, Hank Aaron, the career home run leader. A career average of 305, 2,297 RBIs. Wow. And then number 13, the late Wilton Norman Chamberlain. In the 100-yard game. The second highest point total ever. Right now, let's go back to the studio on Reese Davis. All right, Mark, coming up at halftime, we've got the father against the son, a family feud that Richard Dawson would love. Also, Ron Dane's big day, the big and got loose against the number one ranked rush defense in the land, or at least it was. And on shakedown Saturday, several teams left shook up in the top ten. We'll look at the upsets. All of that's coming up at the half in a few minutes. All right, Reese, and right here, you would think that Wyoming a little shook up. Coming into the game after... A very successful week a week ago against Louisiana Monroe. Putting plenty of points on the board right here. Shut out with 131 to play in the first half. Colorado State with the ball. Newton almost intercepted through it right into the arms of Allen Jones. Jones probably couldn't believe he got hit where he did. Right idea, bad execution. He ran. The corner came up for him. He was going to dump it right over the corner's head. Would have been wide open. <laughs> for some reason, he didn't get enough on the ball. Buys himself time again. Look, he fakes it. Now he's just going to dump it. Oh, man, he bet he wish he had that one on a string. As soon as they let go of it. In basketball, Mike, they call that pulling the string. Didn't follow through. Just kind of shot put that ball oh, out there. Jones has got to be sick. They won't come any easier than that. A room service interception denied. Third down and five for Colorado State. McDougal couldn't break through the line, brought down at the 39-yard line. It'll be fourth down and three to go for Colorado State. I, I definitely don't agree with that call. you got to try and get the first down. I know McDougal's gaining six yards of carry in his career, but he's gone three straight passes. They, two Wyoming was actually probably looking for the run there since they hadn't run in a while. Definitely would have thrown the ball again. You got to try. You got a minute 16. You keep that two-minute offense going. Try and get some more points on the board. Obviously, three to nothing lead. Not big enough by any stretch. Hornick in to punt. And back deep, it's number 45, John Jennings, the senior. You surprised, Mike, that it's such a low-scoring game? I am actually with, with Wyoming and and the run and shoot. They haven't moved the ball like I thought. And and actually, Colorado State has moved the ball, not the way we all thought. We thought it'd be more McDougal, even though he is has been banged up still I thought we'd see him running there. Colorado State 0 and 2 in Mountain West Conference play they absolutely have to have this game. Wyoming meanwhile 1 and 1 in conference play. Both these teams chasing BYU and Utah. Utah winning today against San Diego State improving to 3 and 0 in the conference. And it's standing on his own 28. It's off a great punt. Jennings lets it go over his head. Oh. And this one travels into the end zone. A 60-yard punt, nothing on the return. And don't forget on ESPN2, it's the NHRA O'Reilly Fall Nationals. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. John Forrest defends the funny car title. Gary Chileski defends the top fuel title. And Warren Johnson defending his pro stock title. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. I like to do that stuff at drag racing if I could fit one. I've seen you drive from the airport. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the same thing, it's huh? The same thing. <laughs> There's no difference. Right now, Wyoming, Mike, looking to put the pedal to the metal. Well, with a minute seven to, to go in a run and shoot type style offense, they definitely are going to do that. Watch for Colorado State, though. They have been playing back already tonight, but definitely in this situation, they'll do the same. The one turnover coming so far, courtesy of an interception. And Stoner brought down that time. On the back side, McGucklin. Chad McGuckin, who's filling in for Clark Higgins, who was taken off for x-rays moments ago. Well, that's going to come from your right. We talk about Clark Higgins all night as far as what he can do. And here comes McGuckin in here saying, hey, guys, what about me? That is the second sack of the evening. A 
and we have a lot of flags down on the field. Three of the four D linemen went for Colorado State. Something had to happen. Good ball with an illegal snap by the center. Five yard penalty remains second down. Colorado State sacks 20 in the first four games, two in the last two, a drought. They had nine against Colorado, and actually last week was the first game all season. They had no sacks. Second down and 20 after that penalty. Still under pressure. Unloads to King complete. And King is brought down, gets back some of that yardage out to the 25. Justin Gallimore, one of the... Gallimore twins making the tackle that time. Well, again, Colorado State forced him to throw underneath. They just they missed the tackle. That's where the big game came from. Clock running down 15 seconds. They have to hurry. Third and five. They have to get to the 30. Roman with one timeout remaining. Stoner fumbles it and just pounced on it back at the 16-yard line. So once again, Wyoming self-destructing and you would think that Coach Dana Dimmel is going to get his team into the locker room at halftime and. Give them a once over. And we've seen more than a few snaps already go low, low and outside. One snap didn't even get past the center. So you have a feeling that was an accident waiting to happen there. Colorado State burns one of its remaining timeouts. They have one left. And they have two seconds with which to work with. Well, here's the snap. You see where it goes. It bounces to him. You'd like your quarterback to be able to scoop that up at the center. He's got to be able to get it at least to where he doesn't have to bend down that much for the ball. Well, that's smart by Colorado State yeah. to call that timeout. Absolutely. And now they've taken his second off. Waring standing in the shadows of his own goalpost. And Dallas Davis is standing on the Colorado State 41-yard line to return this punt. Oh, they got Wyoming to jump. Colorado State jumping around on the defense. I get the feeling that Wyoming's a little uptight in this ball. And I get the feeling. Ball start. Offense. Penalties half the distance to the goal. Remains second down. I have a feeling Coach Dana Dimmel is going to chew them out when they get into the locker room. Yeah, there's going to be about 40 young men that get a checkup from the neck up at halftime. Well, now, now what Wyoming is going to do, they're going to run a play. They're not even going to take the chance of punting it. They're going to run a play and just burn the last three seconds. These last two minutes have taken about an hour. Eternity. Colorado. Colorado, the Colorado State using its last timeout. This is smart play. That way you don't get your punt blocked. Or if it's a short punt, the return man can just fair catch it. You can have a field goal. Look at what the Rams have done when leading at halftime. <laughs> I'll tell you, 3 nothing lead. <laughs> Very slim lead, but there's the statistics. And this type of game, that's, that seems like a touchdown almost. This season, Colorado State 3-0 when leading at halftime. Yes. Well, ESPN Thursday night football game night starts at 7.30 p.m. Then it's Utah against Colorado State. Utah winners today against San Diego State. Right now, first place in the Mountain West Conference. The referee's trying to get this one squared away here. Now they've got four seconds on the clock. <laughs> Discussing things with the coaches. This is a series that has been as intense as they come. There has been blood spilled before games as there was back in 1978 when both teams brawled even before the opening kickoff, before the coin toss, actually. Now you got to love rivalries, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Stoner's going to run the ball or just try and take it back and kill the three seconds. And he, he thought about throwing it, then was brought down at the six. So Sonny looked far behind in the scoring department so far. Well, we've talked about McDougal on the Colorado State offense and, and uh, Stoner on the uh, Wyoming offense, but it's been special teams. C.W. Hurst missing a couple, uh, uh, missing one for uh, Colorado State, and Ellie missing two for Wyoming, so it's been the special teams letting down today. We are set for the kick. And has been the pattern tonight so far. No return. Neither team has been able 
to have the opportunity to run one back. Look at the first half numbers. Wyoming with the edge in first downs and passing yardage and total yardage. But so far, the key numbers for the Cowpokes, two missed field goals. Absolutely. Which would have given them the lead. You certainly don't see the yardage out of a run and shoot offense that you normally would see. Even if it doesn't score a lot, usually that type of offense does chew up the yards. First down and 10 from the 20-yard line, Jay Stoner. Waiting on the sidelines while Newton runs the offense for Colorado State. Wide open on the waggle and dropped. Let's go downstairs to Rob Stone. Quick update on uh, Colorado State's Clark Haggins right now. He's getting x-rayed right now in the locker room. His return, beyond questionable, beyond doubtful. He will not be back. And that is a major loss for the Rams defensively. Their leading sack man, maybe the best defensive end in the Mountain West Conference. Absolutely. Both on the run and the pass. Plays the game very well, but his backup, Chad McGuckin, came in and did get a sack. Second down and 10. Newton, 11 of 20 so far tonight. 97 yards passing. McDougal plowing ahead for about three yards out to the 21 yard line. Look at the quarterback comparisons in the first half. That one interception, costly for Stoner. Other than that, you look at his stats, look very good, but that interception definitely looms large. Of course, Newton fighting Corey Wilson home very much tonight, but back up tight end. I'm not sure that's by design either. What do you think? No, no, no definitely not the Wyoming uh, DBs have been taking the primary receivers out. Third down and nine, and McDougal the lone back. Three receivers in on this formation. Wyoming blitzes. Webstock couldn't hang on to it, and it's incomplete. One, two, three kick for Colorado State on its first possession of the second half. Gamble and Lenning in on the stop. Again, coaches will always say the first drive in the third period just as important as that one at the beginning of the game. Newton takes a hit after the play. Again, defense normally comes out of the gate a little more charged than the offense does. Colorado State did it at the beginning of the game. Wyoming did it the first drive here in the third quarter. Ornick standing on his own seven-yard line. Bry back deep for Wyoming. This is a very nice punt. And it'll get a good bounce for Colorado State. A very fortuitous bounce down to the 12-yard line. Well, ESPN Classic, we got a college football one for you. Wednesday at 9, Notre Dame against Michigan back in 1988. Yeah, you hear the classic vibes in the background. Notre Dame won it in 1917. Uh, Mike, you can take a bow on that one. Your alma mater. <laughs> Lou Holtz led the Irish to a 12-0 record and a national title. They're 11th in their illustrious history. 67-yard punt. That's one Bryce should have got over and made a fair catch for and not let hit the ground. Beasley now in the superback position. And first down and 10 for Wyoming. Stoner fires complete to number 19, Tommy Nash. His first reception of the night. It's brought down by Eric Olson. Well, I'm sure head coach Dana Dimmel for Wyoming is going is to want to get this offense going a little bit. Probably was shorter pass at first, get Stoner into the game a little bit. That offense was definitely out of sync in the first half. Only field goal attempts never really threatened the end zone. So we'll want to get some consistency out of him, hopefully on this first drive. And they have been unable to run the ball with any success. So far tonight, second and four, they run it here. That's Beasley. And Beasley has a first down, the 5'11", 200-pound senior. Running nicely that time. McGuckin making the tackle. McGuckin filling in for Hagens at the defensive end spot. Again, Wyoming right on the line. Again, not really a hurry up. Calling the play at the line. They're seeing what Colorado State's going to, how they're going to show on defense. He's getting his pre-snap read a lot quicker this way. First down and 10 from the 23. Flags down, a couple of them. And Beasley brought down. I think Wyoming had a couple of men in motion moving at the same time. Bennett making the tackle on the play. That's against the Cowpokes. 
Yeah, one man started in motion, the other receiver moved. You can't have two people moving at the same time. Illegal shift, two men in motion at the same time. Offense, five yard penalty, repeat the first down. That's the fifth penalty of the evening against Wyoming for a total of 25 yards. It's not going to get it done for Dana Dimmel. Sets up a first down in 15. Again, Stoner calling the play at the line, gets to look at the defense and how they're set. He can try and tell what kind of coverage they're going to be in before the snap count. Let's see what they do here. They run it with nowhere to go. Beasley over that right side. Running over Kellerman, the right tackle. And boy, Adam Wade is having a heck of a ball game tonight for Colorado State. A couple of, a couple of guys, Adam Wade, Amir Lowe, and Ula Tuatella have been three standouts on defense for Colorado State so far. We were looking for a, a bigger game from Eric Olson, who had come back from an appendectomy a couple of weeks ago. Coaches were very happy to get him back on the field. Their strong safety he could play line, like a linebacker, like a defensive back. He's been quiet tonight. Second down and long, 19 to go. Time winding down on the play clock. Just got it off. Stoner complete to King. King underneath at the 26. He's about eight yards short of the first down. Vickers and Wade making the tackle that time. Wade number nine. And King's been the man tonight. That's his fifth reception. Again, the roll right. Then they always, usually Stoner wants to look back and throw. That's to get the whole defense moving with the quarterback doing the half roll, and then he'll look back to the middle of the field. Colorado State playing a lot of two deep zones, so then the middle's not really open for Stoner to look back to, so he's going underneath. This time out with an empty formation, no backs. Plenty of time. King again, his sixth reception of the night. A first down out of the 45-yard line, tackled by Howell. Stoner really looking over the defense, making good decisions. And certainly had time to do it. King does a nice job again. Colorado State dropping deep into the zone. You see King just kind of jogging over the middle, waiting for the, another receiver cleared underneath him. He just took his spot. Stoner able to pick it up because he had time. First down and 10 at the 45. They give it to King on the end around. And King out to the 48-yard line. He'll have about three on the play. Tuatella making the tackle that time. Well, King becoming a workhorse here. Rob Kellerman, the right tackle, does a nice job. 79 there, clearing out. You'll see him coming into your screen, taking Pollard out, giving King the hole. King does a good job, doesn't dance too much, just takes it straight up the field for the four-yard game. Second down and six. Wyoming's first drive of the second half. Beasley still on his feet. Beasley finally stopped up at the 42, but he has another Wyoming first down. A pickup of eight yards on that run. Tim Beasley, the 5'11 senior. Again, this offensive line coming out of a two-point stance. Look at the line, big splits between the guards and tackles. That's to spread them out. And what happens is the defensive line becomes spread out, as you saw Beasley running through arm tackles. Because the line is spread out, not able to get in front of the running back quick enough to get a body tackle on. First down and 10. Give us to the super back. That's Bry this time. Cliff Bry picks up a few. They're certainly working the middle yeah. of the uh, of the defense. And moving the ball well here on their opening drive of the half. Second down and five. Guckin making the stop for Colorado State. Jennings, Bry, and Beasley. All three superbacks getting carries tonight. Rams blitzing. Bry running. Picking his way down to the 30 to the 29 yard line. And another first down on an eight yard pickup by Cliff Bryan. Hey, folks, don't forget if you want to catch a full day's of highlights in just a short time, check out Sports Center. News tonight on Glavin, who was a no go at the World Series against the Yankees. Tyson against Norris in the heavyweight battle, and Tiger on the prowl on the PGA Tour. Going in the National Pro Rental Classic.
Dry running 12 times for 57 yards. Stoner had his arm hit as he threw incomplete. Intended for Brock Ralph to Atelli. In on the pressure that time. Good job by Tuatelli coming on the blitz. See him come to the left of your screen, gets right in his face. Had a very good job of blocking by Cliff Bride. The running back has him on pickup, didn't even get in front of him. If you're not going to block him, at least get in the way of him. <laughs> Make him go around you. Yeah, one of the real underestimated part and overlooked parts of the game, blitz pickup by those backs. Absolutely huh? right. Absolutely. Second down and ten. Three receivers out to the top of your screen. Stoner surveys, fires complete. That's Montgomery, his big target. All six, two of them with an 11-yard pickup. Now to the 18-yard line and a first down. This is the most comfortable I've seen Stoner in the pocket tonight. Again, has a little bit of time. He's starting to spread it out a little bit. King had been getting the lion's share of the receptions. Right back at the line of scrimmage, first and ten, Beasley, the superback. And it's Beasley with room. Beasley! Touchdown, Cowboys! Great job by Beasley shifting the offensive line, not really blowing people off the ball, but what they're doing is staying in front of the Colorado State defenders, the line and the linebackers. Beasley just tucking in behind it and then scooting off to the side and making yards. Elling now, who's had a rough night with field goals, knocks through the extra point. So methodically and invariably, Wyoming marches the ball down the field on its opening drive of the second half and finally gets on the board. 7-3 when we come back. 7-3 Wyoming, courtesy of number seven, Tim Beasley, Mike. Well, you talk about team play, and I guess this really isn't the run as soon as we take a look at it. Nice run up the middle, but watch downfield. Let's stop it here. Wendell Montgomery, number 83, a 210-pound wide receiver, downfield blocking. Just got his 37th consecutive catch tonight, but he's downfield working for those running backs. Let's go back to the studio. And Reese Davis, after this play, he's got a lot of scores and highlights to fill you in on a very exciting Saturday night in college football. And this one, as usual, <laughs> as is the pattern tonight, out of the back of the end zone. Now let's go back to Reese. Mark, thanks a lot. As is their custom, the Wildcats of Arizona fall behind Oregon 5 0. But Ortiz Jenkins is going to take care of that. 65 yards, turning on the Jets, tips going right down the sideline, and Arizona on top 7 to 5. And your Mountain West co leader, BYU, getting cranked up against UNLV. Kevin Federick to Doug Jolly. It's 7 0 for the Cougars. All right, thank you, Reese, and BYU trying to keep pace with Utah. Winners earlier today against San Diego State. Wyoming at 1-1, one one. Colorado at 0-2. Oh Whip the ball, Newton, complete. Out in the flat to number 86, Wilstenholm. With another reception, Hill pushing him out of bounds. You know, when you saw the, those stats, Colorado State cannot afford to have another conference loss. See Newton get a little pressure at the end, coming from the backside by Van Emmerich. Second down and five. Those are the ball at the 25-yard line. You can feel the electricity here at War Memorial Stadium picking up after that Wyoming touchdown. McDougal busting one out to the 40-yard line. Matt Lenning made a touchdown-saving tackle, a 15-yard pickup by the bruising senior, Kevin McDougal. Good block by the guard, Blaine Sapalia, number 61. You see him coming from the left to the right. He's just going to drive down the nose tackle. He's the left guard, driving him down. Breaks McDougal. There he is on the right side of that line. Small 310-pounder. <laughs> Along with Chouette. Play fake, the wagger. He keeps it himself and is hit hard on the corner. 
gain of a couple on the play. Al Rich, the strong safety, coming up to make the stop on run support. That's a good play by Al Rich. He was covering the receiver and then came off and played on the quarterback. Good job of taking him out. Looking down to nine now for Colorado State. Rich, a first teamer in the All-WAC last year. And he was their top tackler, too. He member of that Cowboy defense. Right now trying to make a play on second and nine. McDougal. Fell forward for a couple of yards after being hit by Jared Jarnigan. Usually takes more than one man to bring down Kevin McDougal. Well, we saw Courtney Barnes do it earlier. This time Jarnigan did it. And Talking to Dana Dimmel, he said this guy is a true middle linebacker. Got that nose for the ball, 6'1", 225 pounder. Just has the natural instincts of a linebacker to always be around the ball. That's the second time tonight we've seen one man bring down McDougal. Third and seven from the 43 yard line. McDougal the lone back. Newton fires, his receiver fell. Dallas Davis made the cut on the out pattern, but fell, and there's a flag down on the field as well. I think even if Davis stayed on his feet, that ball was low and away. See who gets the break on the flag. Prior to the snap, we had to delay a game. Offense, five yard penalty. Play clock ran out. Welcome everyone to Laramie, Wyoming, where Colorado State and Wyoming are playing the 91st edition of the Border War. Wyoming leads it 7-3. Colorado State in the white, Wyoming in the brown. I'm Mark Jones along with Mike Golick and Rob Stone. Want to welcome those of you who watched the New York Yankees defeat the Atlanta Braves 4-1 in the first game of the World Series. Another conference on the field. Sure, Dana Dimmel had some strong words at halftime for his crew. Well, it worked because they came out with a lot of fire in their collective bellies on that opening drive of the second half offensively. Let's go downstairs to Rob Stone. Well, if Wyoming takes over possession, they may have to do without running back John Jennings. He's questionable for the rest of the game with a separated rib. Oh, didn't even see when that happened. Jennings, though, with two able backups. And Beasley, who ran for that 18-yard touchdown just a few moments ago. Him and Brian. On the screen, McDougal ran into his own man, and that thing blew up right from the beginning. Back at the 35-yard line. And Colorado State will have to punt. Gamble making the tackle on the play. Well, you're right. It blew up from the beginning because they let Brian Van Emmerich, number 93, in too early. You're supposed to hold the D lineman up for a count. They didn't hold that Van Emmerich up at all. He got Newton's face too early, had to throw the screen way too quick. But Dougal almost got knocked down by his own player. Wyoming certainly carrying the momentum in this third quarter, both offensively and defensively. Two big stops for him defensively now. And now Hornick ready to punt his last one, traveling 67 yards. Line before it gets fumbles it and collects it at the 19-yard line. Wow, anything in the air that long should have a movie on it. It uh, travels 45 <laughs> yards. Nothing on the return. Uh, close one for Cliff Brown. We'll be right back. Wyoming with the 7-3 lead now on its second offensive series of the second half. They scored their first points of the game on their last one. Beasley igniting the offense out of the backfield. And here he is again. Beasley got about four. They'll give him progress up to the 24-yard line. Greg Pollard, the six-foot, 265-pound senior, making the tackle. The total yardage so far, Wyoming with the slight edge in the first half and a decisively huge advantage in the second so far. I guess they had the, I guess they had the louder halftime speech. <laughs> Second down and five for Jay Stoner at quarterback. Out of time. Caught at the 
42 yard line by Wendell Montgomery another first down. Good job by Stoner Wade. He'll clear the cornerback and make the throw right under the safety. Good timing pass by Stoner. Gets the pass off before Eric Olson, the strong safety, can help over the top. That's where Heith comes in, too. Stoner got it up high for the 6-2 receiver. Jay Stoner answering all the critics with a resounding yes. He is ready to retake his starting job and reclaim it. First down and 10, the handoff to Beasley. Let's go back to the studio on Reese Davis. All right, Mark, we saw Ortiz Jenkins touchdown. Uh, Oregon wastes little time answering. Ruben Drones going in virtually untouched till he got to the end zone. He had 76 yards in the first quarter. They went for two, got it. It's 13-7 in the first. All right, thank you, Reese. And, uh, boy, the Pac-10 Pac struggling a little bit. Really down. down this year, absolutely. Arizona came in with all the preseason promise, and I quickly went away and Stanford leading the Pac-10 in the standings right now Stoner to pass they're gonna rule it a completion at the 46 yard line to Tommy Nash got down low got those hands underneath it and made the grab Sprague making the tackle well I tell you what Stoner does a nice job is that the pocket starts to break around and he's such a smart quarterback he knows where to move in the pocket to buy himself time. He's not really looking to run. He'll keep moving. He's looking downfield. He's not looking at the rush. Knows he's buying himself time, rolling the way. He's a right-hander. He's rolling right. Very smart play by the quarterback. First down and 10 from just outside the 45-yard line. They pass again. Complete. Montgomery. It's a fumble. Put it on the ground, but the official is going to rule it was down back at the 33. Montgomery lunging for some extra yardage. Olsen put the hit on him, but they're going to rule that he was down already. Good check by Stoner there. The cornerback over Montgomery was playing off. He checked to a quick out. Almost gave up the ball. Let's see if he's down before the ball comes out. That was the referee's call. And was he down? Oh, yeah, he was yeah. down. Had the elbow down, was lunging forward. Ground caused the fumble. First down and 10 at the 33. This one batted away at the line of scrimmage by Jamie Bennett, number 54. Got one of those big paws up. A 6'2", 275-pound junior. Reading that one. Stoner starting to attack the corners. Looks like he wants to look for Montgomery a little more on the outside. Well, that was one of their objectives, Mike, coming into this game. Get it more to Montgomery and get it more to Shuck, passing especially. Montgomery with four catches tonight for a total of 56 yards. Second down and 10. Stoner working out of the shotgun. sure they might have tried to set up the screen but they got in there pretty quickly Colorado State did well they, they did that was gonna be a screen to Beasley number seven he was he was trying to block the defensive end for a minute was gonna come out but too much pressure will come from your left you see they're blitzing the pressure gets on him too fast two Atella gets in there Beasley doesn't have enough time to do his block for a second and then get out screen a screen pass is timing it's a 1001 1002 1003 count but you can't do that when somebody's in the quarterback's face. So two of nine on third down situations tonight. King complete. And he's going to be stopped short of the first down at the 27-yard line. Willie King with another reception. Olsen making the stop. And again, there's a how Colorado State playing back, giving him the catch underneath the King. Olsen coming up. He's a sure tackler. 215 pounder. He'll come up, play on the line. He'll play like a linebacker, play like a defensive back. He's a very good tackler. There's a Jim Thorpe candidate at the start of the year. Has three interceptions on the season. This is Aaron Elling attempting a 44-yard field goal. He is 0 for 2 on the evening. Well, those are on the short one. Maybe do better on the long one. <laughs> he may have heard you. And you're right, Mike. He nails this one. Much to the delight of the fans and Dana Dimmel, the head coach. 
So the key is you got to back them up, tee it high, and let it fly. The Cowpokes increasing their lead by three more points. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Laramie, Wyoming, where the Cowboys have just taken a 10-3 lead late in the third quarter. Now, Wyoming has been decimated on the defensive front. Three starters lost to injury. None more devastating nor intimidating than this guy. Jeff Boyle, give me an update on your knee. Um, I tore my ACL, my MCL, and I'm going to have surgery Monday, so hopefully that goes well. Now, this guy is a house. You see him working out. This is you yesterday pumping iron. Your strength coach calls you the creature. How does that nickname work with the ladies? Um, I don't know. The ladies really haven't gotten on to that yet, so uh, pretty much only the media is the one who calls me that. So. NFL runs a, a test, 225 pounds. Many times you can bench press it. He did it 41 times. Go look. How many can you do? Is, is that really important? I mean, is that really <laughs> important how many I did, Rob? <laughs> okay, with the aid of a forklift then. Rick Nelson on the return for Colorado State. And he is calling at the 17-yard line. The Cowpokes fired up after 10 unanswered points here in the third period. Rich Sweeney making the tackle along with English. Good tackle coming down. You can tell momentum definitely on the side of Wyoming. You know, going back to Jeff Boyle, what, they really miss him on, on the middle. And, and truthfully about the lifting, when the NFL does their test at 225 pounds, the strongest people are usually in the 30s. This guy did it 42 times. Mark, I'm probably in the low 20s. <laughs> <laughs> on a good day. First and 10, Rashawn Sanders. With his 210 pound frame. He's the lone back, and this is him. And he is sacked after a gain of maybe one yard. At this point, Colorado State has got to sustain a drive. Wyoming's already stopped them twice. Their offense has come out and scored twice. Colorado State's got to put something together here to try and take away the momentum. Yeah, Colorado State's offense hasn't been on the field that much at all here in the second half. Just a little over four minutes, actually. There's only two minutes to go in the half. Wyoming's held for over eight minutes. And Sonny Lubick saying, hey, we'd like to get a victory. It's more important, though, to former players and fans and alumni. Our players seem a little bit sometimes oblivious to the fact that we're supposed to hate Wyoming. Well, it's time for them to get with the program now. Newton fires complete. Number 82, Brad Stavota, with a first down for the Rams. Out near the 35-yard line, a 16-yard pickup. Good decision-making by Matt Newton that time. And then by Spavoto when he got the ball because he came back to the middle of the, of the field. You see the reception to your right. He sees the hole in the middle of the field. He beats the linebacker. Actually, it's the defensive tackle dropping back in his own blitz. They're pretty easy to beat when you're a wide receiver. <laughs> That's number 97, Jason Dreesen, the nose tackle, dropped into coverage. When you wide receivers on the nose tackle, wide out better win. It's called mismatch. First and ten. the draw Sanders stopped up by a charge of tacklers led by Courtney Barnes he was the first to arrive the 6'2 230 pound junior Courtney Barnes talking to head coach Dana Dimmel yesterday he said one of the keys that we know Colorado State's going to try and run we have to stop their run and they have certainly been successful in that today and look at Wyoming's rushing defense not what you would call impressive Although tonight they've done a pretty good job. Absolutely. 93rd in the nation. There's only 114 teams in Division I, so they're definitely near the bottom, but certainly not believing those stats tonight. Second and 12. Newton complete to Kapari. And Kapari has a first down for the Rams at the 46 yard line. A 14 yard pickup. Again, a big gun by Newton. He had a corner, a safety, and a linebacker all triangled around Kapori. Kapori just stopped in the hole. Newton drilled it in there. Great pass. That's what they needed. They needed to move those chains. They needed to try and take the wind a little bit out of Wyoming. They were riding very, very high. I'm winding down in the third period of play. Wilson Hume in motion. A little movement up top. It's a free play. Newton runs and steps out of bounds at the 45-yard line. See, this is where experience will come in for Newton. The flag, the, the flag comes down. He's got to try and see the flag when he's going that way. You get a free, free play. You see the D lineman jumping in the neutral zone for offsides. Go ahead and take your shot deep. You got a free play out of it. You never know what's going to happen.
Look at the penalty situation. Wyoming, the more penalized of the two Offside. so far. Defense, five yard penalty. Repeat the first down. Newton, a junior, that's something needs to learn then that comes with experience knowing when you have a guy in the neutral zone knowing when you get the offsides call and what you can do with it first and five from the 49 the backside pressure newton going up top has a man and it's caught davis touchdown Davis, 49 yards for the score. What a great job by Davis coming up with the ball. The ball looked underthrown. Looked like the defensive back was going to catch up to it. But Davis somehow came down with it, stayed on his feet, made it in the end zone. What a great job by Dallas Davis on an underthrown ball because he had a couple of steps on the defender. A career-long reception for number 27, and now the extra point attempt. Coming from C.W. Hurst to tie the ball game at 10 apiece. Good job to get the snap down by Kent Naughton, number 23. What a way to end the third quarter of play. Dallas Davis, a little stop and go. He says, if I'm leaving, I'm even, and he's out. 10 when we come back 15 minutes to play welcome back for the last 15 minutes of the ball game Colorado State and Wyoming now knotted at 10 apiece C.W. Hurst kicking off to Darren Oncourt and Alex English an interesting swing and shift of momentum in the third period of play finally they get a chance to run one back this is Alex English Hit initially back at the 18, falls forward to the 21-yard line. Peter Hogan making the tackle. Let's go back to Reese Davis in the studio. Well, Mark, Arizona's Rose Bowl hopes cannot afford another conference loss. Of course, A.J. Feely in Oregon, they could care less about that. Feely finding LaCorey Collins for the touchdown. They went for two and got it. The flag was on Arizona. Declined 21-7. Ducks on top. All right, Reeson back here, nose of the ball in the 21-yard line for Jay Stoner. Tied at 10 apiece. They give it to the superback. That was Cliff Bryan, number 23. Maybe, maybe got a yard. Ula Tuatella making the tackle. Well, Wyoming's offense in the first quarter had just 76 yards. In the two quarters after that, they've gotten over 275 yards, not a little over 300 total offense. So they're starting to get in gear in this third quarter. They have looked very, very good. Second down and 10. No gain on that rush by Cliff Brown. Stoner has gone the distance at quarterback for Wyoming. Has time. Got rid of it late. And almost picked off. Should have been picked off by Eric Olsen. And he had nothing but green in front of him. Mark, that was the play. That was the half roll left when they try and make the defense roll. And then he looks back to the middle of the field. And Willie King was running wide open down the middle of the field. Held on to the ball too long. You see King is five yards past the safety. He needed to turn and look at that one a little quicker. That was an easy six if he'd have turned and got rid of that ball a second and a half earlier. Yeah, but Lucas Smith, Mike, had other ideas. Number 55 for Colorado State sets up a third down and 10. And Jay Stoner steps back and calls a timeout. They now have two remaining in the half as Colorado State looks at three remaining timeouts. We'll be back after we take one, too. We are under the night lights for just the second time here in Laramie, Wyoming. Colorado State and Wyoming tied at 10 apiece. The 91st edition of the Border War, Wyoming looking at third and 10. Stoner. Went through all his options and finally fired incomplete. Intended for Tommy Nash, number 19. Oh, and Wyoming is going to get a break here. I believe either a late hit on the quarterback, I think they're going to call. That is a big break for Wyoming and a bad, bad play for Colorado State. Again, 
Stoner did a great job of buying time, looking for the receiver. Roughing the passer. Defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Again, Stoner doesn't want to run to run. He wants to run to, uh, to throw, and that's just a dumb play. That is just a dumb play. You see the ball out of his hand. The defender took a couple of steps and hit him. There was no need for that. Now, if his momentum was carrying him into the quarterback, I could see, but it wasn't. I'm not sure Coach Lubick has much of an argument there. First and 10 at the 36 for Wyoming. They give it to the superback. That's Bry, Cliff Bry. This is his second consecutive game seeing action at the superback spot. To Atala making the tackle that time, number 42. Mark, in most games, there can be anywhere from six to eight plays that can happen from play one to the last play that have a, a decided effect on the outcome. You know what? They can come in the form of penalties as well, and that roughing penalty to give them, to give Wyoming life. We'll have to see how this drive ends, but that may have been one of the plays. Hand it off on the draw to Bry. Bry's got some room over the left side. And he has a first down at Colorado State's 46-yard line. Howell finally making the tackle after the 12-yard pickup. Boy, Bry does a nice job of starting up the field and then breaking it to the outside. That's what he did on his touchdown run. Good vision going up the field, knows when to break it outside, go for those extra yards. Can't say enough. The Wyoming offensive line is, again, doing a great job. Can't say enough out of a two-point stance. It's very difficult to run block, yet they're being able to get in the way of the Colorado State defenders. Now Stoner checking. Easily the one back behind him. Throws the out complete to Kofi Shuck. Kofi Shuck has been conspicuous by his absence and silence in this game so far. Olsen making the tackle, but right there, number 18 is one of their premier players. He's got to see the ball more. Yeah, absolutely, and this is the second time that Stoner has checked off to a receiver where the defender was backed off. This time, Shuck was out wide. Amir Lowe, the cornerback, was backed off about 10 yards. Stoner checked to it. Lowe never moved, and he just hit the outside man. Good job by the quarterback again. Sets up a second down and one. And Beasley is stopped up. He'll lose one or two on the play. Gang tackled back at the 37-yard line. Peter Hogan, number 46, was the first to arrive. I remember even though Aaron Elling has missed two field goals, he did hit from 44 and as long is from 55. We know he has a strong leg. He's already, if it were to end here, would be at about a 55-yarder. So they are in the field goal range. So Colorado State really needs to need to keep him backed up to this point. And there's a look at Elling, who is one of three tonight. Got off to a rough start, but made his last one. That was just an extra one. Third down and one. And I'm not sure that they got it. Bry was stuffed up right at the line of scrimmage. And once again, it was Hogan that got there first. Well, here you are going to get the field goal now. They're, they're right at his long. It should be about a 55, 56 yarder. He's going to kick here. But again, the Wyoming offensive line tried to have the wide splits, but the linebackers that time filled the gaps very well to stop from gaining that yard. He has missed from 37 and 39 and made one from 44 tonight. His long this year is from 55. This one comes from 56. Elling, plenty of leg. Well, he's got a new long now, <laughs> 56 yards. Aaron Elling finds atonement and redemption coming from his toe. 13-10 when we come back. Wyoming taking a three-point lead courtesy of that 56-yard field goal by Elling just moments ago. A look at the standings as they are right now in the Mountain West. Utah atop BYU leading UNLV 7-0 right now. So they can tie Utah. Wyoming at 1-1. One one. Colorado State cannot afford to lose tonight. At the very least, two losses are going to win this conference. The way BYU and Utah are going, they're going to try and make it <laughs> one. There is so much parity in this Mountain West yes, conference. And road teams have done especially well so far. This is the inaugural season of the Mountain West. They are 
are standing up and being noticed around the country very well. Williams kick goes out of the back of the end zone. A look at Colorado State's remaining schedule. Next Thursday against Utah, a game you can see on ESPN, Thursday night football, then at New Mexico, a tough one at Air Force, and then at UNLV. So they can play three on the road to finish out. As for Wyoming, they are at Utah, a game you can see on ESPN2 right here, then BYU, New Mexico, and then on the road at San Diego State, who lost today and who are one and three. Newton threw a bullet, a rope, that finds its way to his receiver, Davis, who caught the touchdown moments ago. It's pushed out of bounds by Trent Gamble, number 20. One thing offensive coordinator Steve Fairchild said that Davis is a great route runner. You see it again. He comes back to his quarterback. Takes a one or two step back that just gives him enough distance between himself and the cornerback for the reception. Very, very disciplined route runner, says offensive coordinator Steve Fairchild. The team's leading receiver gives them a first down. At the 34-yard line. They trail by three with about 10 and a half to play. Busting one up the middle is Rashawn Sanders. The freshman out of San Diego with another first down for the Rams. An 11-yard pickup that time. We haven't seen many long runs from Colorado State today. That one courtesy of Broderick Lancaster, number 68. The pulling guard did a great job of clearing the hole for the long run. Sanders, an interesting story, Mike. Uh, as you know, uh, his high school, they only had 500 students. Best of a small bunch. A lot of people overlooked him. Glad to have him, though. Here's Newton. Receiver open at the 48-yard line. That's number 25, Frank Rice, working on Allen Jones, number 16. Good job. These receivers really have a good relationship with their quarterback. You see, this is an in route. He's the secondary receiver. He sees his quarterback has got a little trouble, so he starts to fade back to the outside again to get a little distance. Good job by Frank Rice. Newton, get rid of the ball. Oh, well. I might call that a late hit. I'll tell you what, if you were going to call it the other way, it was about as late as the other one. What did they say about payback? Yeah. Second down and four. <laughs> Newton in the flat to Sanders. Couldn't shake two defenders. Jared Jarnigan made the initial stop and hit. He got about two yards, sets up a third and maybe two to go for Colorado State. Starting to see Wyoming, the defensive line, three out, three in, starting to do a little rotation. Looks like they're starting to get winded. That time, Brian Van Emmerich, number 93, patted on the helmet, meaning he wanted to come out. They did a wholesale change on the D-line to try and stay fresh. Talk about fatigue. Both these programs, both these schools at altitude. We are at over 7,200 feet right here. Matt Newton, 19 of 29, 200 yards. And a touchdown pass. Third and two. With time wide open over the middle. Davis. Dallas Davis with another clutch reception. Bringing his team down to the 31-yard line. An 18-yard pickup. Lenning making the stop finally for Wyoming. Well, the play-action pass really helped because the linebacker, Courtney Barnes, got sucked up. And now Davis has no linebacker. You see Barnes running in number 28 late. He should have been back there. That would have made Newton have to throw it over the top a little more. Good job on the play-action. They sold it. Davis was wide open. On a third and two. First down and ten. Both quarterbacks acquitting themselves well tonight. Newton and Stoner. Now it's Newton's turn. Going up top. Has a man. Touchdown, Colorado State. Great adjustment on the ball by Will Lane. It was underthrown, but he put on the brakes to make the catch. Boy, we saw Dallas Davis come back on the underthrown ball. This time Lane coming back on the underthrown ball. This is very difficult for a defensive back to know this ball can be this much underthrown because he had pretty good coverage. Lane comes back, makes a great adjustment for the touchdown. Yeah, that is a tough play to make if you're a DB. But you think you have the coverage all set there. You don't know it's going to be five yards underthrown. Hurst in for the extra point. Of course, Newton will say he planned it that way the whole time. <laughs> it counts either way. 
after a dearth of offense in the first half, we have plenty of scoring here in the second. Newton to Lane. And Colorado State takes a 17 to 13 lead with a little over eight minutes to play in the 91st edition of the Border War. Come on back. In keeping with the pattern, the visiting team has won the last four contests. Colorado State with the lead. Look at the last touchdown. You check out like a long fade. Look in the left hand corner. You can see number 24 Wyoming gamble about a step behind trying to make it up. Newton under throws it. Lane adjusts to it. Gamble was too worried about making up for that step. He was behind. Couldn't adjust to the ball. Seven points. And Colorado State offensively responding to those Wyoming scores and regaining the lead. So Newton, meanwhile, Mike, he's thrown to 10 different receivers, really spreading things around. Again, that's another great way to keep, keep a defense on its heels, not locking in on one receiver. This one will be returned. At the three, it's Dan Enkart. And he takes it out to the 33-yard line and back to Reese Davis. All right, Mark, we all know the 21-7 lead in the Pac-10 is nothing. That's what Oregon has on Arizona. Keith Smith, who just had a 49-yard run to set this up, passed to Bobby Wade for the touchdown, and the Cats back within a touchdown in 21-14. BYU and Vegas. Owen Hodgman, 48 yards out, and the Cougars on top 10-0. Vegas hasn't won at home yet, so much for playing with house money. <laughs> I'm not a betting man, Reese Davis. BYU with the lead, and look at the Mountain West. Their non-conference record, 20-11. That's impressive enough. Boy, they are doing a great job. All right, and now look at BYU's remaining schedule. Air Force at home, then on the road for a pair, and then finishing up at home against Utah. That could be that the could big be crescendo. The, the showdown, right? Any three receiver set out to the top of your screen. Tim Beasley. Stoner oh, checking yeah. again. Yep. Oh, they're coming with a blitz, and they get to him, sacking him back at the six-yard line. Number nine, Adam Wade has had a ball game tonight, folks. Filling in for Tony Calcione, who lost his job as the result of a high ankle sprain. And the way that Wade's playing, he may not get it back for a while. He's a freshman, 6'195 pounder. Not a big guy, but he plays the corner well there. Uses his speed and athleticism, not really any the strength. Good technique. Nice call by Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator for the Rams. They have three sacks tonight, 25 on the season. Stoner to pass. Stoner to run. Out to the 16-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Rob Stone. Guys, things just seem to keep getting better for Colorado State right now. We reported earlier Clark Haggins most likely out of the game. Scratch that. Ought to be young. He is up. He is warming up. I just spoke to him, and there he is. He is in the game right now. All right, Rob went into the locker room for x-rays. Got retaped, obviously, and back on the field. It's all about the border war, isn't it? <laughs> Brings out the temerity in everybody. Stoner with plenty of time, and look who made the sack. Hagans on his first play back. Clark Hagans makes the sack and stops Wyoming short of the first down by about a yard. Well, you see the career sack leader, but he does more than just that. Actually, Adam Goldberg did a nice job of blocking him, keeping him away from the quarterback, number 74. But watch Hagans run him down. They need 10 yards. Hagans says, you know what, I'll give you nine, and you got a punt. Into punt is wearing. Dallas Davis standing back on his 33 yard line. Low snap that bounces. Aaron gets off a high kick. Davis to return. Dallas Davis dancing and weaving down to the 44 yard line. Colorado State leading by four points with 5.50 to play. A 43 yard punt, 10 on the return. Hagans, heroics, the border war, another chapter still to be completed. Colorado State leading by four, War Memorial Stadium here in Laramie in its infancy and then recently going through some very significant renovations. 
This is the 100th anniversary of this rivalry and a look at the stadium, which has really flexed its muscles and filled out. And coming to full fruition in 1999. Grass looks a little better there than it did in 1950. Yeah. And under the lights <laughs> for one of the few times, just the second time. Their game was against BYU. Mountain West Conference showdown. McDougal, the lone back. On first and ten. The counter, McDougal, stuffed up and escaped somehow. Makes it back near the line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. Jarnigan making the tackle. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. Now, when was the first game played at War Memorial Stadium? Oh, I know that one. You do? Yeah. Okay. Well, hold on to it. Before, Don't tell. I, before I was born. <laughs> Oh, well, I get it. I got everybody in the truck yelling, don't tell the answer, don't tell. Like, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> you are Magna Cum aren't you? Oh, something like that. Second down and 10 after that McDougal non-game. The play fake. Newton. Is he picked off? Yes, he is. No, oh, they're going to rule it incomplete. incomplete. Jared Jarnigan. Let's go back to Reese Davis first. All right, Mark, Arizona getting busy again from its own 20 to Tron candidate. Reverse! Then it's Northcutt coming the other way. Look at Keith Smith getting with him. That is a quarterback getting it done on the block, and well, nobody's going to catch Northcutt. Turns on the Jets, 80 yards, and takes it to the house, and Arizona has caught Oregon. Nobody caught Northcutt, tied at 21, almost at halftime. Controversial non-call moments ago. Was it or wasn't it an interception by Jarnigan? The official said no. Tough to tell from that angle. Looked yeah. like it might have bounced off the grass. Colorado State burning one of its timeouts. They have two remaining. Wyoming also with two remaining. Dana Dimmel still a little bit steamed. Not getting the benefit of that last call. We're going to take a break. Colorado State has won four of the last six meetings between them and Wyoming. Visiting team winners in the last four of each meetings. Third down and ten for the Rams. McDougal did not get the first down. Hauled down at the 48 by Dreesen. And he lost his balance coming through the line. He's very mad at himself for not keeping his feet. He might have had a chance to break it to the outside and get the first down, but he lost his balance. Jason Dreesen made sure he didn't go any farther. Wonder if Wyoming might come after Horneck on this one. Bry standing at his own 13. Low snap. Hornick gets off a high punt. And Bry feels it at the four is brought down immediately. Jerron Jones makes the tackle at the four on the 47-yard punt. We are in Laramie, Wyoming. War Memorial Stadium. Colorado State in the white, Wyoming in the brown. The team in the white leading right now with a 17-13 advantage. I'm Mark Jones along with Mike Golick and Rob Stone on the sidelines. And let's go to Rob on the sidelines. Yeah, or hearing the uh, Colorado State defensive coaches preaching to their defense, Jay Stoner, you're a marked man. The words annihilation came out of their lips. They want to take them out of the game. One thing to watch on the series, Colorado State really going to start looking to try and force a fumble. Well, they have the lead with 4.17 to play in the fourth. Stoner out of the end zone. Wide open at the 18. And a first down, Willie King out near the 30-yard line. Well, for the Wyoming offense, it's going to be about blitz pickup because Colorado State's going to come after him. They did there. Nobody ended up on Willie King. Ends up wide open. A 25-yard gain. Nobody near him, Mike. No, he ran a little delay route right behind the receiver in front of him. And almost stepped out of bounds, too. Ball of the 29. Flag down. 
easily takes it up the middle, but the whistle had blown. Well, Stoner checked the play, and he ran out of time. All right, the snap. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Wyoming, oh. Wyoming has been the more penalized team tonight. But both quarterbacks uh, acquitting themselves well this evening. Jay Stoner and Matt Newton. Both Look. have very good stats. Jay Stoner, though, in this run-and-shoot offense, not able to put the ball in the end zone through the air at all. Stoner has now moved into fourth place, meanwhile, on the all-time passing list with 4,937 yards. Well, they're adding two seconds to the clock. It proved to be a valuable two seconds. If you're Wyoming here, what are you looking to do, Mike? Well, I mean... Outside of scoring. Obviously, you have plenty of time, but you have to get... Unless you get down the field quick for a field goal and an onside kick, you have to get the ball in the end zone. So you've got time. No, no sense of panicking yet. If you want to set up the home run ball, that's fine, but no sense of going for it right away. You can still keep run your offense. And King has been one of Stoner's favorite targets today. Eight receptions for a total of...